العالمين يا رب العالمين فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اتي الله اتي رسول الله منكم always a reminder for myself and abdukul ajisu da'ifu miskinu zalim jahar but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence <coughs> alhamdulillah by writing these realities we can come back and visit and read them for there's not always a time where things are going to be broadcasted and there's not always a time in which the speaker is going to speak, means everything has an ending and everything has a beginning. So by writing it, not only we take the barakah of writing it into our kitab but at, at the same time becomes a resource for ourselves. So that this becomes the, the fountain in which we drink and we eat from eternally that we can give to our children and so this is what my shaykh taught me. And this is the knowledges that I uh, obtained of these realities as they become more and more scarce. <clears throat> as we begin the, the month of hijrah and the month of movement towards the Divinely Presence, importance at the door of this reality is, who is your Lord? If this not understood then subsequent everything changes. So the ideology of my Lord and the interpretation of the word Rabb. So R-A-B when we read transliteration of who is my Rabb, eh, the external understanding of scholars is they say that the Lordship is for Allah and this is the Most High, Rabbiul A'la. But in reality the word Rabb is an authority, not the Creator. So the way of Marifa and Tariqahs come to teach that when you read the word Rabb it's, who is your authority? Read in the name of your authority and that which governs you and tariqah comes teaching to be humble. So do you really think that you come in… Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, this is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. To this way, you drink, you smoke, you, you watch every forbidden, do every forbidden and say that you're under Rabbi al-A'la. No, don't lie, don't be hypocrite. Your Rabb is nafs. means avoid hypocrisy when dealing with Allah, that's how you avoid punishment. Say, Ya Rabbi, oh, I, I'm, I'm no way under your lordship and authority, I'm following my own desires. That's why an abdukul ajisu da'ifu miski, nobody has to beat me, I've already admitted to Allah no, 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 no need for punishment, I've told them I am uh, ignorant. If they choose to listen to me, this from their heart. But I'm not claiming I'm something. If the shaykh is doing that, imagine then the student what they should be saying. So at the door of this way of pilgrimage, when we're entering in, we're entering through the door of humility that, my Lord are my vices and my sins. 
So the shaykh is representing many people, if you're drinking and smoking your Lord is uh, your vice and your bad desire. How could you say that your Lord is Allah but you, you can't put down your cigarette, you can't put down your drink, you can't put down your pornography, you can't put down television, you can't put down phone, you can't put down bad desires, you can't put down zina, you can't put down all these things. And that's why it's not Rabbil Ala, it's not your Creator is your Lord, is what is governing you. So we have the articles on rububiyyah and Lordship. And it's important on this door of pilgrimage, where are you pilgrimaging to? So then the first is, whom knows himself will know his Lord. It's the hadith of Prophet whom who knows himself will know his Lord, arafa nafsuhu arafa rabbuhu. Means if you know your nafs, you know who's your Rabb. If your nafs is wild, your, your Rabb is your vice and your bad character. That's why when those external scholars say, oh this is Allah, no astaghfirullah it's not Allah. Your, your governing authority is your vice and your bad desires otherwise you would have stopped them. That's the great fight that Prophet is giving to us, fight so that your Rabb is really going to be Allah. So when the servant begins to fight they realize they have so many bad desires and it's so difficult. So they embark on this path of fighting, fight yourself not other people. You're not in charge of the Rabb of other people, you have to be the Lord of your heart and the Lord of your home. Imagine in your home there are other people who are lords and governing your home. You can't live there. So I mean same for the heart. If you're not in control of your heart and your emotions, your character, there's a different authority living within you. That one has to be destroyed and fought. So when they read Rabb in Qur'an, take it to your own situation. Don't always read at the highest level but at your own understanding of what is Rabb and in what authority. Iqra bi ismi rabbika ladhi khalaq In understanding Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem and how we got from bi ismi and Allah, Ar Rahman, Ar Raheem. How we got to all these realities. Its preface is in understanding Lordship. So when we understand we're fighting against the lords of bad desires, we begin to slaughter and fight those. Then we ask that Allah send us into His ulul amr to be lords over us. Remember we have to be bought from the satanic kingdom, when you fight and fight and fight and fight there has to be a, a transaction from Prophet to dispatches Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq to take you out of the hands of shaitans. So otherwise the shaitan will never leave you alone, he'll call you wherever you are, he'll send all his agents to find you wherever you are, hey oh you're wearing a beard and hiding with these guys now come back to us. He'll never leave you alone and that's the system of shaitan. That's why they can't walk out of it. Those people who sign their souls away, as soon as they say, oh I don't want it anymore, you see them hallucinating and going crazy because they can't unsign their contracts. They can't just walk away from shaitan once they made a deal with shaitan. So it means there has to be a transaction for the believer in which Allah accepts their tawbah and has written for them a destiny to leave shaitan. And that Prophet begin to dispatch people to be taken out of the hands of shaitan. As a result their Lord is no longer the vices and bad desires. As they begin to move up then this is the understanding of the ulul am that you have to be given to the authorities of dunya so that you need a living guide and that becomes the Lord of your dunya. 
because there has to be an authority who's governing you on dunya and this is isharat and guidance. As the, the lord of your vices was governing you that when we come to get a shaykh and a guide there's going to be a fight between the guide and your devils. Because the devil say, no I'm the authority of this person, I've been governing him for 40 years or 30 years. He says, no he's now taken allegiance and you have to leave. And spiritually there's a battle and that's why the shaykh comes with the madad and support of all his shaykhs and all the energies and beings that Allah has assigned to them. That's why the adab of, of the jinn and respect for the unseen communities because they're greatly needed in this level of support because you have unseen beings sort of governing you, governing people, they, they rule them with all the, the vices that people have. So as a part of their allegiance and coming towards the way then these good beings and good spiritual support surround that servant to push away all the badness and, and the bad characters and bad elements that are trying to destroy that individual. So then means the next tier of lordship are the lords that are governing us and the authorities of this dunya. That's what it means to be under Atiullah, Atiya Rasul wa Ulul Amri Minkum. Why? Because Atiullah is not for you yet if you're, you're fighting all your… your uh, if we fight all of our bad characters we're not obeying Allah And no way are we obeying Prophet So it means then what? Allah is like a rope then make sure you're on the hands of the ulul am because this fight is you against 700,000 demons that are never letting you go, never saying, oh congratulations you decided to wake up and follow Islam and we, we completely will walk away now, thank you very much. No, the 700,000 coming to destroy you because now you want to perfect yourself. And this is Allah's rahmah and mercy is then come to the hand of ulul am and hold hands, hold tight to their hands and that Allah's hand on them. Yadullahi fawqa adihim, huh? why Allah added that? Is that my hand on all their hands? Because now Allah's hand is then on, means that the hand of that ulul am is not the one that helping you. But once you took their hand Allah gives from Holy Qur'an the dalil that my hand is on all of them because they fulfilled that arrangement and that, that reality of Atiullah, Atiya Rasulun ulul amri minkum. As a result of Allah's hand upon them, now they are asking for the heavenly kingdom upon earth to be their authority and to move within the house of lords. If we can enter on this earth the kingdom of authority, we can now progress from the heavenly kingdom upon earth into the heavenly kingdom in the malakut in the world of light. If we're out in the field playing with demons how could we think that we're praying in paradise and that Rabbiul Allah is with us? Say, Allah then get out of the field with animals, go into this palace, right? Because that's Atal Rasul, he's the king. If you want to enter into the kingdom then you have to take the hands of his men. When we took the hands of his men we entered into the kingdom of Allah under the Sultanate of Sayyidina Muhammad As a result now you are in the heavenly kingdom upon earth because it's Muhammad is that door upon earth. If you are under the hand and in that kingdom on earth now you'll be trained, purified and cleansed to worship Rabbiul A'la.
Most High, Arafa Nafsahu will one day become Arafa Rabb Hu. But you have to be in the presence of He of dunya who will take you to the He of Akhirah. So there's a who who represents who. We must be in the presence of that who in the world of form who takes us to the who in the world of light. Qul who Allah is speaking to him, say who, what shall I say? Allahu Ahad, Allahu Samad. This is a dialogue, this is the dialogue of sincerity. There is a soul that's so sincere that in the surah of ikhlas it's only a surah of sincerity, there's no other issues, no other commands, nothing. It has such a level of purity and immense reality, this is a dialogue between hu wa huwa. Where Allah is the qul hu, speaking, Allah speaking a qul hu. That hu is the one whom we have to reach in dunya. He's the head of hidayat and he's the secret of wow and wudud. So who has the secret of guidance and who is the secret of Divinely love? Allah gave us a hint by saying, Habibullah I created him out of my Divinely love for I'm a treasure hidden wanting to be known. Allah is going to be known through love because Allah is love. Violent people think Allah will be known through violence. Angry people will think Allah will be known through anger, vengeance, terror, punishment, rip you to pieces. Allah is love, He created all creation out of muhabbat and ishq, look to the flowers the fragrance, look to all the animal kingdom, their love, look to the beautific nature of creation, everywhere you see is love. The only wildness you see are in humans. So Allah represents Divinely love, He gives this love upon the servant and the real who of dunya is the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad And Allah wants us to find that reality, that authority. So the Ulul Am, they are the house of lords on this earth. Their souls are Rabbaniyoon and Allah gives them their title in Qur'an, Kunu ma Rabbaniyoon. Be Rabbaniyoon whom they learned the book and taught the book. Then when you talk to people they say, oh no we, we learn Qur'an, we're Hafiz Qur'an, we're Rabbaniyoon. Uh -huh. You didn't learn the book and you definitely didn't teach the book. The Kitabullah is the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad and that you have to learn that otherwise you just learn Furqan. Prophet is the walking Qur'an, the eternal ever living Qur'an, moving Qur'an which is not created Allah's Divinely speech but manifesting in the light of Sayyidina Muhammad from the heart of the soul of Sayyidina Muhammad and manzir of Qur'an, the house in which the location of Holy Qur'an is emanating in the world of light, it can be understood but can be denied. The immensity of that reality is enough to be astonished. 
By that light, by that guidance all these realities Allah wants us to reach. Reach to these ulul am who are lordly souls, Rabbaniyoon. They learn the kitab means they reach to Prophet in Hadrat and Nabi they're in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and they teach that reality of Muhammadiyyah and the realities of the Muhammadan haqqaiqs. These are the real Rabbaniyoon. The mission to grab you and take you to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad From the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad now you can go to Allah. Mecca, Medina, Mecca. First Mecca was you had to agree to fight the devil. So you need to find the ulul amr. You really gonna fight this devil by yourself and you didn't take the hand of a shaykh? Then look like you're way underestimating your opponent and look like you're gonna fail. So that's the, the aqeedah of shayateen, they tell people, oh you don't need a guide. Or because they want to win the fight. So why would you take the lesson from shaitan on who you need and don't you need? The holy companions they were need and needing Prophet So it means everybody's in need. So at the first level of Mecca is that we have to be with ulul am. If you're not with ulul am you already lost to shaitan. So if I was you I would find an ulul am so that you can begin your true fight against your devil. At that time their mission is to take you on your pilgrimage to Medina to Munawwara which we just described. You have to come to the presence of the one of love who Allah created all this creation for that love, made the flowers to be beatific because that love, His holy presence on this earth and that would arrive upon this earth Allah made this earth to be beatific otherwise it would have been the moon dark and filled with holes, nothing of any value. It's beautified for the sake of Sayyidina Muhammad Only with the Muhammadan light supporting you, dressing you, blessing you, becoming Madani, the people of Medina, the perfection of your soul. Because now it has the light of Muhammadun Rasulullah And what Allah describes of that, how can I punish them when you are amongst them and they're making tawbah and forgiveness? Means now you have the shield that protects you from Allah's anger and grants you, قُلْ إِنِي كُنْتُمْ تُهِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحِبُكُمُ اللَّهِ Because you went to the real who of love. And he bestowed upon you a love and cast out the demons. And as a, as a result Allah now your life is to follow Him and I will love you. Now when you direct yourself back to Mecca everything opens for you. If this state is not understood the words of these huge awliya won't be understood. So when Mawlana Shah Naqshaban gives you the 11 principles of tariqah, it's not at your struggling state. Do the dhikr of Allah 1500 times, do this, do that, do this, it's in your madani state. Nothing going to open for you until the light of Prophet is within you. That you are Muhammadiyoon. At that time when you entered into Mecca you make dhikr of Allah because you are in the light of Muhammadun Rasul Allah. So means this, these realities have to be understood otherwise these haqqaiqs don't make any sense for people. 
اقرا باسم ربك الذي خلق خلق الانسان من علق so iqra first command that allah azawajal gives his servant read iqra bi ismi rabbik in what name prophet sallallahu is commanded to read is not the same as what you're commanded to read and it's not going to be the same as what the shaykh is commanded to read so there is a name in which opens for each servant their reality and this is then the the first of revelation because it's the first door of realities if you're reading in the name of Allah thinking all of this going to open for you when we just described that you're not under that authority. You're not under that reality, so you don't start that high. Read in the name of an authority given to you is what your madad and your training for your madad. Mean read in the name of, of your madad and ask for support. So that this madad comes to you, support comes to you so that difficulty can be vanquished and pushed away from the believer so that they understand their, their reality. InshaAllah we go more into it at a later time but each has a key. If they start with too big a key it's like a child, Bismi Rabbika ladi like, I'm going to be like Allah, I'm going to be like Prophet and I'm going to mention Rabbiul A'la and everything is going to open for me, nothing opens for these people. That's why no knowledge is open for them. This path of humility is, Ya Rabbi that uh, nothing like that going to open for me. And nothing like that is going to open for me from the presence of Prophet So means that I had to have first reached to the hands of Ulul Amr whom they recalibrated me with their allegiance and that I took my bayat on the way and so that my bayat was symbolic that I was returning my trust and that Allah's hand is upon them. As a result my Islam is now coming to be true and in the name of my shaykhs and the madad and support that Allah giving to them, I'm asking for protection and movement into these realms. That's why the, the key of madad is so essential because the key of ignorance is they think, oh we don't have to go upon anyone but Allah but we just explained the whole path of hijrah was not like that. You fought in Mecca but you still had to enter Medina, only from Medina the light of Allah dresses you back into Mecca. But people want to go straight away and make du'a as if they're already in the people of Mecca and Allah is dressing upon them, opening upon them. But Allah sent this a system is go fight your devils and train with these ulul am and let them take you into Medina to Munawwara to be in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Only with that ishq and muhabbat and the purified presence of Prophet that he's with you and that you're asking forgiveness Allah is Ghafoor Raheem and I love them and bring them back into the real state of Mecca and the real state of Allah's presence, the real state of their salah, the real state of their praying, real, sta real state of their du'a. All of those realities to dress upon the servant, inshaAllah. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. So everyone has a name in which to read and that's why these realities have deeper understandings. Say, so, well, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem bi ismi, bi ismi 
Al Ali. Allah's most high name, Bismi. Because people say, how you go Bismi then Allah, Rahman, Rahim? It's because it's the whole teaching. You can't take the end and say, oh you didn't understand. Of course you didn't understand, it's not that simple. But when Allah is giving to us these haqqaiqs, Bismi, Bismi ala al-Aliyu, the Most High and Bahaqqa Ali. In the name of the Most High al-Ali and by the reality of Ali. Imam Ali salam. In the name of Allah and the secret of a khaliq and bi haqqa Fatima So means then all these haqqaiqs have to be understood to understand what's this coding, iqra bi ismi rabbik, read in your name of your Lord, which are the Lords that govern you, you read to open up these realities, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.